Oh, so um, the first thing I would say is um, after we ended our class last week, so I had to sit down to figure out how to clone a Git, you no know, Git file or into my hair. That took like I've not done that before. I used to download the zip, the lazy way. So, but I had to sit down, and um, that took very very long time. But at the end, I figured it out. I was using a Windows operating system, but yes, I figured it out. So. So I'll be working from the Markdown section in her, which I think is very easy. And um, I would advise, you know, subsequently, you know, that we should um, embrace this because um, it makes the whole thing easier. And then we can walk through um, what we intend to do. And um, I would also like to point out that the content here, it's um, slightly different from um, the, the book. So, um, Yes, but uh, whichever way we decide or whichever way the person presenting feels convenient with, then it, it's fine. So um, let me just kick off um, with um, chapter two and three. Um, chapter two is just a page and um, it's introducing us into um, the whole side diverse and then telling us about uh, data exploration and then data visualization. And um, that leads to the third chapter, which is data visualization, which is what I'm going to start with you know, right away. So there is a simple quote here, which says, the simple graph has brought more information to the data analyst mind than any other device. So the, uh, the running theme through this um, chapter is um, how to, make um, graphs using the ggplot and then how to do some transformation and then how to produce some nice plots that um, not only nice in terms of aesthetics but also self you know, interpreting and then um, then how to make you know some other um, and how to bring out some other inherent um, aspects from the data sets that, uh, that are not really um, visible or that might not be possible no, uh, from traditional mapping, maybe in Excel and all that. So this chapter, I'll just read some of these things now. This chapter will teach you know, how to visualize our data using the ggplot2, which is a package. And um, R are several systems for make, making graphs. We have the plot, but the ggplot is one of the most elegant and one of the most versatile. It implements the grammar of graphics, you know, using different systems for describing and building the graphs. And um, with this ggplot, you can do a lot more than you know, with some traditional um, packages like just the plots. Okay, so for this um, chapter, the focus will be on ggplot2. And this is one of the core members of the tidyverse. And um, through you know, the just, just um, going through um, all what is contained within this chapter, this is uh, like um, the breakdown, the aesthetic mappings, and then the common problems. Then we we'll look at facets, then um, geometric objects, then statistical transformations, position adjustments, coordinate systems, and then the layer, the layered grammar of graphics. So let me just, um, let's delve into it you know, right away. So um, Thidiverse um, is a package, so you have to install it. If you don't have it, then um, yeah, you have to install it if you don't have it. And then to install is just um, using this um, function, install.packages, then um, Thidiverse in the inverted command, then inside the bracket and then you run that code, then it's going to install several adjoining packages. But um, if you have it already, you just um, run library, then tidyverse, and then it calls up um, the package, which I'm going to do now. So I'll just click here, and then I'll wait. Okay. Then once that is done, 
then in the package, you know, this comes up telling us that um, the package is active and all that. Then, um, like I said, you need to install if you've not done so. And then, um, yes, there's, also, there's another way you can call a specific um, function from the package. For example, you can call you know, using ggplot2, then this um, full colon, full colon, then ggplot2. So that's, um, you want to call a specific um, function from a package. So that's um, um, the, um, the command, yes, to do that. Okay, so um, first steps. Um, let us use our first graph to answer a question. Um, and the question is, do cars with big engines use? Okay. Can I, can I quickly ask a question? Yes. So All on, right, uh, yes. On row 44, I just want to quickly understand what that means. So if you need to be explicit about that. Okay. Form, use a special form. Could you please just explain that a bit more? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, why I didn't um, say much about that is because subsequently we'll see how that is used. Okay, oh, but um, this is saying, okay, this is saying something like, um, if you go to line 59, mm -hmm. line 59, you can see ggplot2, and then they are calling mpg. So this is saying that um, they want to call this, this is actually a file that is um, embedded, you know, that comes with ggplot2. So you can call a function directly from um, from a package using this command, or you can um, um, call the package and then call the function subsequently. So it's um, it depends on how versatile one is. Okay, so, um, all right. So um, the question is, do cars with big engines use more fuel than cars with um, small engines? That's um, the question. And then we have to know the answer. Yes, we um, have an answer already. But then we want to try to make the answer more precise. What does the relationship between car between engine size and fuel efficiency look like? So there is um engine size on one hand, and then there is um fuel efficiency on the other hand, and then we want to compare, and then we want to see across you know, across space what um what is the relationship like? You know, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it linear? or is it uh, non-linear? Now, we'll call it data frame. The data frame is called MPG. MPG is a data frame that is found in um, Google, uh, sorry, that is found in ggplot2. And um, it's a rectangular collection of variables. Remember, um, I think um, last week, yes, we are made to know that um, ggplot works with um, rectangular um, um, collection of data. So it's a rectangular collection of variables, a data frame that is in columns. And then we have variables in columns, you know, in columns. And then we have you no know, you know, observations in, in rows. And um, this um, data frame you know, was collected by the United States Environmental Protection Agency on 39 models of car. So they have um, 39 models of car and then they collected uh, various um, variables which we would see subsequently. So I want to call um, this data frame. So because I've already, um, excuse me, because I've already called the um, the library, which is, um, or the package, which is tidyverse, then I can call um, mpg directly. I don't have to write um, ggplot2 mpg because um, it's already, you know, the, the, the package is already active. So, so it's going to, so yes, yeah, so I've, um, so this now shows um, MPG, what it's like. Now we have um, manufacturer, we have model, then we have DISPL, would we'll, um, check the meaning later on. We have year, we have CYL, then transmission, you have drive, and then, and so on and so forth. But here we see, we have um, 234 rows against 11 columns. So we have um, 234 rows against 11 columns for this particular data frame called um, 
MPG. So that's um, the data frame we want to, we are going to work with. This is the raw data, this is how it looks like. And then we would um, use um, ggplot to bring out some very nice plots using different functions and different um, techniques as we'll see subsequently. Okay, so um, now among the variables in, in the data frame called MPG, we have, um, like I said, the DISPL is the cars engine size in liters. Then um, this is just telling us the um, the attributes within the data frame, what they stand for. The HY, HWY is the cars fuel efficiency on the highway in miles per gallon. And here the, we have um, a note which says a car with a low fuel efficiency consumes more fuel than a car with a high fuel efficiency when they travel the same the same distance okay which which is actually um which is valid okay so uh, before i go on there are actually several ways we can um try to um see what is within this um what is within um the data frame um so although subsequently yes um that was um, applied but if i do something like glimpse glimpse and then i do mpg then if i okay let me if i delete this so that i won't so if i do something like this then we would see you no know, this is like a glimpse into the data then we have um, rows, still 234. We have columns, 11. Then here we have manufacturer. We have model. We have the same, the same thing that um, we we saw, you know, the other time. Then um, we can also do something like um, question mark. If we do question mark MPG, that's going to take us into um, that's going to open a, a, um, a discussion or like um, like a directory on MPG, and that's going to tell us a lot about um, these um, these what would I call it now all these um, shorts and C Y L T R A N S D. Okay, let me just try and do that here on the console here. If I put a question mark in front. Front of MPG, then on my right hand side, it's going to open you no know, the details. So I have to move here. Sorry, is it is it visible? Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. okay, fine. Okay, so here we have um everything listed. Um, a data frame with 234 rows, 11 variables. We already know that. The manufacturer, manufacturer name, we have that. The model, which is the model name, we have that already. So the displacement, that's engine displacement in liters. We have year, we have number of cylinders, we have um, type of transmission. Then we have DRV, type of drivetrain. Is it front wheel? Is it rear wheel? Is it four wheel drive? City Y, that's um, city miles per gallon. Then um, HWY, we have um, highway miles per gallon. Then fuel type, then class, then the type of car. So um, that's you know, a question mark before um, any function actually would take us into a notes help. It's like the help, and then you know, we can use that to fathom whatever it is that we want to find out. So then also, um, we also need to know the structure of um, the data. Um, from here, we see this character, this character, we need this later on, model to his character, then um, displacement is, um, that should be mm, string, but yeah, yeah. Then here, yeah, integer, city, CYL integer, then you have character, character, then we have integers, integers. I don't know why displacement is not in integers. I don't know. Then um then FL is um character, then class to his character. So subsequently we'd get to 
see um, the combinations and exactly what um, is happening. Okay, so um, creating a ggplot. Uh, so to create a ggplot, um, this is the frame for creating a ggplot. Um, let me, I, I wrote this. This is the frame for creating a ggplot. This is like the generic code for creating a ggplot. So the first thing is to call the, um, the function ggplot, then you open a bracket, then the data, then um, the data is going to be in a data frame. So you have a data frame like data. In this case, is MPG. Then we have a geom function. A geom function is going to tell us, um, it, a geom function carries, um, could take um, geom, any, a geom underscore any of points, line, smooth, histogram, box plots, map, text, etc. This would um, see subsequently. So then um, the geom function now goes with mapping. And then the mapping goes with aesthetics. And then inside um, the aesthetics now will tell us what is our X and then what is our Y, which is um, the coordinates. What is our X? No, what is our Y? So that's um, the generic frame for creating a ggplot. Now, the next line is for us to see how this is uh, written. So to plot MPG, we are to run the code to put displacement on X axis and then highway miles per gallon on the Y axis. So um, we are going to have a scatter plot. So we have, like I said earlier on GG plots, then the data, the data was the data we are working with. The data we are working with is um, MPG, then the plus, and then the plus, that means we are adding something. What are we adding? The geom function. But in this case now, it's a scatter plot. So it's geom point, so geom underscore point. And this, um, even mere overing, mere typing geom underscore point, it's going to tell us um, that um, it carries a mapping function and then the you know, subsequent um, functions you have to put into it. So the mapping, the mapping now is equals to the aesthetics. The aesthetics now will tell us what is our X and then what is our Y? So in this case now, our hex is displacement and then our Y is um, highway miles per gallon. And then we'll close the function and we'll run this. If we run this now, it's um, going to take a while. Click on the, the plots tab on the on the lower right. Yes. Uh I wish I can okay. Here you go. Uh, okay. You should see the, the plot there that you just created. Uh do you see the the mark that I made? It's, it's like on what? the right. Oh, sorry, I can't see what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay, I guess my drawings are not um, visible. Oh, okay, sorry, okay. I'm coming. I don't know. Sorry, my system is... I don't know why. Okay. All right. Okay, so I don't know why this is delaying. Oh, okay. Yes, I, 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 I've seen the mark you've made. Oh, yes, I've seen that. Oh, okay. Do you want me to, okay, you want me to open plots? It's, it's all right. It's like, a, I, I forgot that this is a, our markdown file. So it like. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah. It's going to come up here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so this is, um, the plot 
um, showing the relationship between highway and displacement. And um, yeah, this is um, a typical ggplot. This is how it's going to look like if we call this function ggplot data mpg, then geom underscore point. It could be geom underscore line, depending on how, you know, what we are comparing um, between the x and the y. So this is um, the relationship between highway and then the displacement. Now, the plot shows a negative relationship because um, this is telling us that um, as displacement increases, um, the highway, um, is that highway miles or something? The, under the help, the highway miles decreases. Then as displacement decrease, increases, uh, decreases, we have um, increase in highway, highway miles. So there's um, a kind of um, inverse relationship. So that's what this is saying. In other words, cars with big engines use more fuel. Um, and then the question is, does this confirm or refute our hypothesis earlier on? Now with ggplot, we can begin to you know, use the function ggplot to do some other things. Now ggplot creates a coordinate system that we can add layers to. Now the first argument we've made you know, here is um, to call the ggplot, then to call the data, which is mpg. Whereas um, if we just, um, if we do an empty plot, if we do an empty um, um, call like ggplot and then an empty function without anything inside, it's going to give us, um, okay, um, let me sh just show that um, this is um, what that is saying. So if I do this and um, I do plot, then it's going to bring a blank, it's going to bring a blank plot because um, um, I've not instructed the the function. What's the x? What's the y? Is it a point? Is it a line? So that's what um, the second layer performs, which is um, the geom, the geom point. The geom point carries um, the mapping, and then we have the aesthetics. All this will be explained, you know, later on. X, the x now is displacement. Um, displacement and then the y is um, H -W -Y. so um, so that's what um, that point is trying to make that if we don't instruct you know, um, the function what it should do then it's going to create an empty graph but um, yeah we know that's not what we want to do so to complete our graph we have to add more layers which is um, the function geom point which adds a layer of points to our plot and it creates a scatter plot. So um, uh, ggplot2 comes with many geom functions, which I've said earlier on. And um, each one adds a different type of layer to a plot. And we will be going through a whole lot as we move along in this um, chapter. Also, geom function in the plot takes a mapping argument. And um, this mapping argument defines how variables in our data sets are mapped to visual properties of our plot. And the mapping argument is paired with the aesthetics, which is AES, and the X and Y argument of the aesthetics specify which variables to map to the X and the Y axis. Now, ggplot looks for the mapped variables in the data argument, in this case, MPG, and then performs um, the mapping argument and then produces you know, the plots that we've just, um, we've just seen now. Let us turn this code, um, into you no know, to make um, okay so this um, there was um move everything inside here and then they asked us to put it back in but um I've already I'd actually done that it's really not um something difficult it's just for us to repeat what we we did earlier on now the rest of this chapter will show us how to complete and extend this template to make different types of graphs. Now we'll begin with mapping. So we have um, this exercise, even though, yes, I've provided some of the answers now. If you run ggplot, data is equals to mpg. I think we already know. This is going to give us a blank plot. Now what do we see? This is going to give us a blank plot. And then the next one is um, how many rows are in um, mpg and how many columns? So glimpse, like, we, like I said earlier on, 
234, then 11. That's you know, going to tell us um, the rows and the columns in our data set now. What does DRV variable describe? I have done that you now using question mark, then, you know, which is help. So read the help for, you know, question mark MPG to find out that. Okay, so the next one is uh, make a scatter plot of um, HWY against CYL. So um, that's what we have here. So, the, um, okay, let me clean this and then, okay. So we want to make a scatter plot of um, HWY against CYL. So the first thing is um, to call the ggplot and then um, our data, the data in this case is um, MPG. And then we have to add, we can't call, if we stop here, then it's not going to plot. It's going to give us a blank space. Then we have to add um, the next function, which is um, which is um, the geom point. The geom point and then this geom point takes the mapping argument the mapping argument and then this mapping argument uses um, the aesthetics to tell us where you know x is going to be and where y is going to be in this case now x is um highway miles per you know liters per gallon something then y is equals to c y hell and then we have um our plots our scatter plots ready and then Yes, so it doesn't really make sense, but this is what they want us, um, this is what the exercise wants us to do. So we have this, and then the next question says, um, what happens if you make a scatter plot of class versus drive, and then why is the plot not useful? Okay, so um, yes, so um, this, the, the generic you know, um, way, GG plot data, we are working with MPG, the plus, then the jump point, then the argument mapping, then the aesthetics, you know, then the X class, and the Y DRV. And then let's see what happens. And then we can query why it's not useful. Okay, so if you look at it now, they are both um, characters, um, class, is um, telling us um, class is divided into the type of uh, or the brand of um, the vehicle, two-seater, compact, mid-size, minivan, pickup, SUV, subcompact, and then the drive is telling us the drivetrain. Is it a rear wheel? Is it front wheel? Or is it four wheel drive? So this plot at this stage doesn't make sense, but um, subsequently we'll see how we can incorporate characters into, into our plot. Okay, at this point, let me pause. Any question? I hope I'm not too fast. Okay. Any question? I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are from my end, no question. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no question. For okay. so. There are some questions for oh, on okay to double check you have installed okay. DBL is also double, which is floating integer. Okay, integer is okay. I think okay, good. Yes, I was trying to okay. Okay, I think it's say the screen option Okay. All right. Okay, so um I think so the next um, subsection is um, the aesthetic, ma aesthetic ma mappings. And um, we have another quote here which says, the greatest value of a picture is when it forces us to notice what we never expected to see. Okay, in the plots that will be plot that will um, sh be shown below, one group of points is highlighted in red and they seem to fall out of the, you know, of the assumption we, we held earlier on. These cars have a higher, higher mileage than you might expect. And then how can you explain this, uh, this car? So um, from the plot, from the plot, um, from this plot here, the, that place is referring to these outliers, this section, and then they are trying to see how we can um, show them differently 
from the rest of um, the other um, data sets. So um, this is what this plot is going to do, but we can look at it together. Um, we have the GG plot here. Then we have the data as MPG. So um, you can also bring, you know, rather than um, saying June points, you can actually write it in different ways. So this is another way of writing this. Um, mapping, it can actually take this function within this frame. Mapping is still the same thing. Then we have the AES, X is displacement, then Y is highway mouse. And then we come to the next line. Then we have the June point. So we are calling, you know, we have color now, green. And then it's giving it a size, 3.2. And then you have geo point again. Then we have data. Now here we have a package, DPLYR. And this package is calling a function called filter. So um, specifically, we are calling this filter from this package. And this package is actually embedded inside tidyverse. So um, it's calling this filter to perform a filtering function. And then the filtering function will be performed on MPG, displacements, you no know, displacement values greater than five, and also intersecting with highway values greater than 20, color it red and make it a size of 2.2. So that's um, what we want to see. The outlier is what we want to bring out here. And exactly that's what um, has been done. So we have them in red. So we have them in red here. And then you know, the explanation is that um, the, the the explanation here is that um, they fall outside the linear trend. These cars have higher, higher mileage than um, than one might expect. So how can one explain you know, these cars? What exactly um, was their class or what's um, what's their drive? Are they front wheel? Are they minivan? Are they subcompact? Why are they you know, behaving this way? So. Um, to find, um, okay, okay, that was, okay, I think that was my own plot. Then this, okay, this is exactly what was done in the exercise. That was my own, this is exactly what was done in the exercise. Okay, so, um, okay, so um, what was different here was that um, I was calling color here. I was calling color here, so, okay. So um, I should, I was just playing around here. So if I deleted this, this should give what was performed below. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is showing the outliers and then we need to know what um, type of vehicles or what class of vehicles um, that they belong. So this is what the old statement here is saying. Um, why are they behaving that way? They, they, they are not following the normal um, hypothesis. So one way to test this is to look at the class value for each car. And then um, the class variable of the MPG data sets classifies cars into groups, such as compact, midsize, and SUV. If the outlying points are hybrids, then they should be classified as compact cars or perhaps subcompact cars. We should keep that in mind. This data was collected okay, before hybrid trucks and SUV became popular, okay? So we can add a third variable to, to the um, to the generic way of writing of producing a plot, and that's bringing in a class, you know, to a two-dimensional scatter plot by mapping it to an aesthetic. So we should have it in mind that this class is um is um not um is not um its character, and then we want to bring in character into a two-dimensional scatter plot. So an aesthetic is a visual property of the objects in your plot. And it includes you know, things like size, the shape, and the color of our points. And then we can display points, you know, like the one we'll be showing below, in different ways by changing the values of its aesthetic properties. And then blah, blah, blah. I think we can check that on. Okay, so um, here we have a um, series of plots. We have um, GG plots. Then we have um, a geo point with a size of 20. We have another geo point. No, with a size of 10, no, then another one with a size of 20, no, different shapes, color, then labels, then this will be talked about much later on. The X, the scale will be talked about much later on. Okay, so um, 
So, but this is just showing us that um, we can change um, our scatter plots. We can change you know, the color. Then we can um, change the size. We can change the shape. Like they've said, we can change the shape. And then also, we can also influence our markings on our X and our Y axis. And um, that's where we have this scale X continuous, you know, telling us how to um, place you know, the markings on the X and the Y axis. And it's also telling us that um, it also carries the label function, which is one of the last um, arguments to be seen you know, towards the end of the chapter. Okay, so um, we can convey this um, information into our plot. No, now that we know we can um, embed a lot of things into our ggplot scatter plots. Now, here we want to bring in the class. Now, what we and then we already know from this um, um, frame that um, the zoom points can carry color. So all what was added to the um, to the generic way of plotting using a ggplot was just to bring in an extra um, command saying let the color of our points be according to class so um and then the color here can either be british or american so um whichever one you uh, prefer so the color let the color of the scatter points you no know, be according to the class you no know, of the data set so if I run this now, now we have you know, this you know, showing the different color types of each of the points based on the class. So we can see where you know, the outliers, you know, where they fit into, uh, that they actually to sit out. Though we have one extra one here that's a mid-size um, uh, mid class, but generally, you know, they, they are two sitter, you know, they are classified as two sitter. So, um, so this is another, another way of um, um, plotting you know, two dimension and then using an extra, you know, an extra variable or an extra attribute of um, the data set to vary, you know, to vary the, the scatter plot. And then we begin to see a lot of things that we can also still do you know, using some of them um, other arguments. Okay, so um, now to map an aesthetic to a variable, I associate the name of the aesthetic to the name of the variable inside AES, like we just did now. ggplot, you automatically assign you no know, unique level of the aesthetic here, unique color to each unique value of the variable, a process known as scaling. Okay, then it will also give us a legend as we've um, as we just um, as we've just seen. It's going to give us a legend, and then um, and that is because um, we are adding it you know, within. If we place it outside, it's going to be another ball game entirely. If we had done this, um, if we had done this, um, color is supposed to, let me see, green. If we had done this, it's going to be another thing entirely. So it's um, okay still should still plot but um, it's not going to scale yeah so it's going to plot but it's not going to scale because um the color is not within you know the aesthetics so um that is also you no know, like common common problems because we want to scale by color but because of this extra you no know, parenthesis that it's not um um, within, you know, it's not, um, we are not asking the plot to do, to vary it by color, by, you know, X and Y. So the, the bracket is sort of um, taking the color outside, you know, the aesthetics, you know, um, function or, or, or the mapping argument. So um, we can also note that as um, some common problems. Okay. So, um, no. Okay. So, yeah should work now okay what is wrong here okay okay extra one 
Object screen not found, sorry. Okay. Uh oh, what's up? Okay. Sorry. Perfect. Okay, so um oh no, it's not perfect. Oh okay. Now I'm doing trial by error. Okay, something is wrong here. Two points, my feeling statistics color. Cool. Oh, sorry. Should be class. No, oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, so, um, okay. Then what I was saying the other time was not what I should have said. So if it had been like this, it shouldn't have, shouldn't have, on, which is what they want to show us yes yeah, so it's not going to um perform this way if we had um not um if the argument is not within you know the mapping if it's not within the mapping argument so okay so um so that's what they are trying to point out here now um the colors reveal many unusual points um uh, and then uh, okay, like I said, uh, the outliers belong to two car sitters. These cars don't seem like hybrids and are in fact sport cars. Sport cars have large engines and that's for those in two vehicles. Okay, in Insight, these cars were unlikely to be hybrids since they have um, large engines. In the above example, we mapped class to the color aesthetic, but we could have mapped class to the size aesthetic in the same way. Okay, so um, we want to show, we want to vary um, the, the scatter plot by size. So it's still the same way, rather than saying color, then we say size to vary you know, the size based on the class. And then you know, it's going to give us warning because it's telling us that it's not advisable or it's not really perhaps sensible, but this is varying it according to class. And then it's going to vary the size of the, the um, of the of the points. But since um, the class is not in metrics, then these um, gradations might not really make so much sense. So, um, or we could map class to the alpha aesthetics, which controls transparency of the points or the shape or, or the shape or the shape aesthetic, which controls uh, the shape of the points. Okay, so um, now we want to look at what alpha does and then what shape does, although um, we've been told that um, alpha um, controls transparency and then shape controls um, the shape of the points. So um, we'd look at how that you know, is um, rendered. Here, here is for alpha. Now we'd we'll see um, grayscales, it's in grayscale. We we'll see from black to very light gray. And then the other one, yeah, this is for shape. However, we we'll see that for SUV, there is no shape because we only have um, six classes or six types of shape. So this is not going to be appropriate for um, a class that is more than, um, or an attribute in this case now, that is more than six. Okay, so this is explained, you know, here. This is explained here. And then um, this, the, the, here it's telling us that um, once you map an aesthetic, ggplot takes you know, care of the rest. It selects a reasonable scale to use with the aesthetic. It constructs a legend that explains the mapping between levels and then, um, and the values. For X and Y aesthetics, ggplot does not create a legend. But it creates an axis line with ticks, with tick marks and label. The axis line acts as a legend. It explains the mapping between locations and value. We can also set the aesthetic properties of your of our geo manually. And um, for example, we can make all the points in our plot blue. Okay, so um, that's something that okay. So this here now is saying all the points should be blue. We can see that it's not within here. So this is going to make um, the points 
here blue and then we can make it any color but it's not going to give it um a legend yes it's not going to give it a legend as they've explained as it's been explained earlier on okay here the color doesn't convey the information about a variable but only changes the appearance of the plot to set the to set an aesthetic manually we have to set aesthetic by name as an argument of our geom point it goes outside of aesthetic you need to pick a level you know, that makes sense you know, for that you know, aesthetic the name of a color as a character string then the size of a point in millimeter then the shape of that point you now as shown you know, here um, as to be shown subsequently but this here is just um, going to tell us um, this here is going to tell us various uh, ways through which we can present our points. This should tell us various ways through which we can present our points. Okay. Um, I mean, okay. This should tell us various ways through which we can present our points. It's going to, to show us shapes and then, uh oh. Uh -oh. Something is wrong. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I think there is um, an issue here. I have to start all over again. Okay, so while we are waiting, I think the time is um yeah, so I guess while while we're waiting, I guess um it's probably the best for us to probably maybe move the second the second I don't know what to call it, second half of the chapter itself so next week. Um oh, okay. Uh because it seems like it's quite a long chapter. Um but I guess the, the other information is going to be please guys, please just um uh like I said at the beginning of the call. I created a spreadsheet where we could all volunteer for whatever classes you want to take across all the chapters and the book itself. So please just take a look at the spreadsheet and just put your name in, you know, whatever chapters that, that would be good. But it seems very likely that we might end up taking this class itself to to, to next week. Thanks. Oh, okay. So um okay, so that's that's plot is just to show us different shapes, different um and then um, different sizes. I'm trying to I have to start. From, okay, I have to call the package. Okay, so. Is going on. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's not here. So yeah, it's here. Just a minute, okay. All right, okay. So this is to show us some different um, shapes that we have, and then um, the the way geom points can carry some other functions, size, then filling the shape, and then you know, various um, ways we can um, manipulate some of these um, some of these shapes. And then what we can we can bring out you know, out of out of that. So okay. So um, then we have um, these exercises here. Um, the first exercise is what's going on with this code? Why are the points not blue? Okay. So um, here is the code. So it's saying why are the points not blue? Okay. So perhaps I should um, leave that so maybe someone can. Um, 
say something. I think I've been doing it like teaching. Let me, let me, let me, let me take <laughs> I'm it. sorry about that. Let me take a second. Okay. So based on your explanation, okay. it is not blue because like all the points are not blue because the if the um the code, the color, I don't know what you call it itself, is within the AES um bracket. Okay. Um, so if it was okay. outside, then yes, it's quite like everything blue. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So because the color argument is within the AES argument, okay? Yeah, so it should be outside. AES are seen in the color is equals to blue as a, so it's seeing the color as a categorical variable. That's why it's creating you know, a legend, a legend for it, like we did for class. So if um, if we bring it out, then it's going to, it's going to be you know, the other way around, okay? Which variables in the MPG are categorical? um then which variable are continuous so we could um this something we can do put um a question mark mpg with no drive we know um class those are categorical variables um drive categorical class then is also categorical variables and then you know, we can find subsequently okay the third one says um, we should map a continuous variable to color size and shape you know then how do these aesthetics behave differently for categorical versus um, continuous okay so we should map a continuous variable to color size and shape okay so um okay this is hit here okay Okay, so categorical variable should map, sorry, map a continuous variable rather to color, to size, and then to shape. So we've, that's that's already, you know, that's um, what is, is shown here. So just uh, pick, um, um, now rather than um, calling um, class, no, then here we are calling city mouse in gallon. It's um, it's in um, it's a continuous variable, so it's going to grade it. It's going to grade the color into 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 sizes. It's going to grade the point into sizes, and then um, it's going to give it a color. So that's um, what you no know, what has been done here. That's what has been done here, and then um this the next one says how do these aesthetics behave di differently for categorical versus continuous so if we if we vary this now um if we vary this with um, a categorical variable uh maybe if i change this to something like um drive then yeah so we could see that uh, it's, it's, this is a um, categorical variable versus a continuous variable. So it really doesn't make so much sense this way. Okay, so um, that's um, to, that's about the question. Now, the fourth question is what happens if you map the same variable to multiple aesthetics? What happens if we map the same variable to multiple aesthetics, okay? um let's see okay so this is what happens they, something they've done earlier on so we have um it's going to give it's going to um, give it um grade it into sizes but it's not going to make any sense because um this trans is um that's drive um yeah um, that's um, yes the transmission um it's um categorical so um it won't it won't give any um it's not going to convey any message as such so that, that that's um that's uh about that okay then this says um what does stroke what does the stroke aesthetic do and then what shapes does it work with in use um geom points okay what does stroke you know as an aesthetic do and then what shapes does um, does it work with? So um, the first thing is we can first of all check you know, what stroke is before we, um, um, okay, 
before we uh, okay but we can also um uh, try to what does stroke aesthetic do and then okay let's see start this should be the last one okay gg plot then okay let me see it's giving us an int that we should use geom point geom point i think i've done this too okay so stroke as an aesthetic okay stroke is here um okay but um okay but we can always find out even if we don't know we can always find out mpg then zoom point anesthetic okay mapping okay aesthetic okay x is equals to then maybe we have something like stroke I don't think I it's going to go that way not sure that's that's okay object oh sorry okay object that's not found find the function stroke Okay, sorry, I have to check how. So if anybody can help out, I think we're already passing our time though. Okay, jump and understand all oh, this. Okay, X, Y. Okay, as an aesthetic. So I think it should be something like this. I think, should it be something like this? an aesthetic okay i'm not, not so sure about this i don't think i check this okay oh no no okay maybe stroke class um no no stroke is not um it's not in the data frame it's actually um it goes with jump points um and then uh, and i think i did this and then it's um um yeah it's x y alpha color few group shape stroke okay stroke class oh okay 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 i get what you are saying now okay mapping yes x equals to displacement y is equals to hwy mm, okay stroke Okay, no, 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 no. Stroke. Uh, okay, let me see the RV. Okay, the RV should be like this. Okay, let's see this. No, nah, it's not a numeric. I don't know. I don't think somebody, maybe stroke is equal to five. Should you modify the width? Strokes, shape, seven thing. Okay. And I think I, okay. What does stroke aesthetic? It should be in the aesthetics. Okay. Glass, no. If it's not doing for this, then it's not going to do for. No. Okay. No numeric okay okay um let's see city y perfect okay so yeah it carries um a numeric function it's could carry a numeric attributes okay so um yeah it blows up the the the, the shape of the points it blows the shape of the points okay so i think um we might have to stop here Yep, yep, yeah, I, I think I agree.
think we might have to stop here. I mean, thank you guys very much for participating. I think this has been a very, very nice first, first session. Um, so I know what John usually do is they usually edit these videos and post it on YouTube. Um, I think there is a channel that they share it or probably they share it on the, on the main channel itself. So the R4 data science channel itself. Um, then also the, everything that we have, we have had in our chats. I think the team also posts it as like a chat dog on the channel itself. So, I mean, thank you guys very much for engaging for this first session. Um, and I'll, I'll see you guys again next week. Thank you very much, Adi. I mean, I mean that, was, that was fantastic. I mean, for your first session, I think it was very <laughs> interesting. All right. For the <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, apologies for uh, the glitches here and there. Ah, uh, it's fine. Okay. It's part of the entire thank you. Song, I guess. Thank, thank you, guys. All the best.